Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. It's kind of like a functional equation, but it's with polynomials. So what are polynomials? Polynomials are basically functions that are um, kind of sum of powers of x, where the powers are non-negative integers. Okay, so we have a polynomial and it's basically being composed with itself three times or should I say two times? It's kind of like a P composition, P composition, P, or P of P of P of X. And that gives us 8X plus 21, and we're trying to solve for P of X. First of all, before we get into the solution, we need to talk about a couple things. First of all, we don't know what kind of polynomial we have, or we, maybe we do. But we can make some guesses or conjectures and then test them. So here's one of the things that's super duper important, and I'm planning to make a separate lecture video on polynomials. Maybe it's going to be a series. Let me know what you think. But anyways, um, this polynomial has to satisfy certain criteria, which means can I take any, any polynomial and just compose it with itself and then still get something like 8x plus 21? It's not always going to happen. So we need to talk about the degree of a polynomial. So what is the degree of a polynomial? For example, if I write p of x equals x cubed plus 2, that is a cubic polynomial. Its degree is 3, the highest power of the variable, in case we have one variable. Okay. So we kind of need to specify the degree because if you take any polynomial, like let's say a cubic polynomial, and let's keep it very simple like x cubed, if you compose it with itself like p of p of x, it just means p of x cubed, but p is just going to cube whatever is inside. If you cube x cubed, you're going to get x to the ninth power. So the degree is actually tripled here. Why? Because a 3 is squared. Make sense? And if you do it one more time, obviously, you're going to get a different story. So you can't use any polynomial, and obviously, cubics are not going to satisfy, because notice that we get, at the end, a linear polynomial. So what kind of polynomial gives us a linear when we compose it like this, p of p of p? And the answer is a linear polynomial. Because if you think about quadratic, let's say you have x squared. And by the way, I don't have to write a full quadratic like ax squared plus bx plus c. I could. And let's do it that way. I mean, just complicate things a little bit here. Not too complicated, but if because the power is always represented by the highest power. So the rest has, plays no role in the power. But let's still use it. What is p of p of x? Now think about it. Replace p of x with a x squared plus bx plus c. And then you're going to get something like this. This will replace x. So it's going to be a times a x squared plus bx plus c squared plus b times a x squared plus bx plus c plus c. You see that? You see what I see? And then when you expand this, you're going to get x to the fourth power. And obviously, that's not going to give us a linear function. That's why we do need something to the first power so that we can just multiply by itself, square it, cube it, we still get first power. Make sense? So, to keep a long story short, I know I kept it very long, we do need a linear polynomial. So, in other words, p of x needs to be linear. P of x must be, that's a must, a linear polynomial. Or must be linear, we can just say it must be linear. And what kind of polynomials are linear? We can write a linear polynomial as ax plus b. Awesome. Where a and b are real numbers. Okay. So let's go ahead and evaluate p of p of p of x. So what is p of p x? Let's evaluate it first because then we can go ahead and plug it into p again. p of p of x means p of ax plus b, but p takes the argument ax plus b and then multiplies by a, so it's going to be a times ax plus b plus b. And you can kind of evaluate this as a squared x plus ab plus b. That's p of p of x. What is p of p of p of x. Well, I already know this part, right? This is x a squared x plus ab plus b. 
And if you P it again, like, don't get me wrong, like, if you apply P to this, that you're going to get the following. A times A, a squared X plus AB plus B. This is AX, but X is being replaced by that, plus B. And guess what? This is equal to 8X plus 21. Was it the original one? Let's check. Okay, yeah, that's right. 8X plus 21. So we got ourselves an equation. Let's rewrite it. Bigger, nicer. So let's go ahead and put it like this. And yay, we can solve this equation. These two are polynomials, and they're equal for all values of X over the set of real numbers. Therefore, therefore, we can safely say that the coefficient of x must be the same on both sides, right? So what is that supposed to mean? By the way, I forgot to do something here. It's not a squared, it's a cubed x. Okay, so that's one thing that, oh yes, I forgot to simplify this. Never mind, let me go back and fix it real quick. So I'm going to evaluate this a cubed x plus a squared b plus a b plus b. So it's just this one multiply by a and added b. Cool. Now we're going to write it as follows. a cubed x. Okay, so this is good. This is what I'm looking for. And now I need to set it equal to 8x plus 21. I'm like, it can't be a squared, right? So now these two things are equal. And what is that supposed to mean? Like I said earlier, the coefficient of x must be the same on both sides. So a cubed must be 8. And there's only one solution. If you had a problem with p of p of x is given something, then this would have two solutions. With the three case or the cubic case, we only have one solution. That's what's cool about it, right? Or maybe there's more than one, who knows? Let's check it out because we haven't found B yet. Okay, so from here A is equal to two. And then what I can do is I can set the constant equal to 21, which is A squared B plus AB plus B equals 21. But now I know that A is equal to two, therefore I can just plug it in here, which is gonna make it a lot easier. If a is 2, this is 4b, and if a is 2, this is 2b, or not 2b, plus b equals 21. And from here I get 7b equals 21, which means b is equal to 3. So there's only one solution, and we were looking for p of x, and p of x was written as ax plus b, remember? So the solution to this equation is 2x plus 3. And is that the only solution? And the answer is yes, because for a single A value, we found a single B value, which means there's gonna be a single solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.